all kind of things. And can you take God money sending to him her every week, every month, every year? And that's why your money is going down. Or you can't say amen to ouch. Here it is, brethren. If I'm wrong, then you correct me. Don't listen if I'm wrong. Hello? Least of these, my brethren, is the king speaking. Yes. Then he says, you have done it, what? Unto me. Read on. Next verse quickly. Then shall he say unto them on the left, that depart from me, you curse. Depart from me, what? Curse. curse. Depart from me, you what? What does it take for a man to be blessed or cursed? Giving. Give what does it take Obedience. to determine or define a man from being blessed or cursed? According to the Bible, what is it? Somebody say obedience. That's good. That's a good answer. Obeying or disobeying. Accepting or rejecting God. You reject God, you curse. Don't care who you are. Read it in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read it all over the Bible. He will bless you as you serve him. You are cursed when you reject him. That's why the world is going around in a circle. Today it looks good, tomorrow it falls down. Not only the world, but every man who rejects God. This is not a church that breeds on propaganda. But I just learned the news about our good brother Chris. I don't know how it is, but I've been hearing. You know about brother Chris. Is it Chris is his name? The Nigerian, big Nigerian Chris, Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris. You haven't heard? Why should be I be the one to hear bad news? I heard it's all over the news that brother Chris, his wife has left him. And the rumor, rumor, I don't know about it, I can't guarantee this. Rumor having to say that he and his brothers and deacons, that they are pregnating all the women over in Africa and, and living some very riotous and ungodly life. I don't know it to be true. But I understand that it's been accepted that at least the deacons and the, his brothers and his relatives in the ministry all over Africa I understand it's rock news. I heard it was at CNN. I heard it was all over. Why did I bring it up anyway? I didn't bring it up to, to hurt the young man. No. I bring it up to say, when you are blessed, you must stay under the blood. You must live in obedience to God. Or else the curse of God will fall upon your life. Why don't somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. Must behave yourself. Behave yourself. Stood the two things the devil used to destroy. A man of God is money and women. Leave money alone and run far from women. Come on, say amen. amen. That's why I tell the women here, I say, I love you like crazy, but I ain't getting close to you. Amen. Oh, you know, I say amen. amen. That means you were expecting it, did not come. So cancel, cancel it. Hello? Why? Because you need me like this. You don't need me like that. Amen. You need me in the spirit and not in the flesh. For they that sow to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But they that sow after the spirit shall of the spirit reap eternal life. Somebody give God praise and glory. Amen. Not getting close to no woman. Amen. And those are your men in here. If the woman is not your wife, don't get close to her. Amen. Oh, you understand? Amen. amen. We got to keep the church clean. If she's not your wife, leave her alone. Amen. Because you're not only messing her up, you're blocking her future. Come on, say amen. Because another man can't see her because your shadow is a blocking her. 
stay with your own wife. And those that you don't marry, stop hugging up and kissing up. Come on, feel better, say yeah, man. Yeah. You're not married. Intimacy is stored up only for the married. Yeah. Yeah. You better mind God knock you. You don't want to put yourself in jeopardy with God. But if you just behave yourself and just wait upon the Lord, then he shall renew your strength. You shall get the right husband at the right time. Can somebody say amen? amen. Haven't you heard the say in Jamaica, what God no more? Come by the morning, can't come to the evening. You know what you heard? If you start the thing bad, God help you tomorrow. Because all you're going to do is live your life trying to cope with the after effect of your own creation. You know why so much marriages are in mess? Because it starts wrong. And as a result of that, both people for the rest of their lives together just fighting to kind of keep it together. But it's not that it's really together. But the one that starts right, those two are enjoying it right into eternity. Because God was in it from the beginning. They respected God. They would not violate the laws of God because the fear of God was in their heart. And they want the blessings of God to be upon them and upon their children, even to their children's children. He shall say unto them on the, on the left hand, depart from me, ye curse, into what? Into everlasting fire, prepare for who? We change the scripture. That's where I want to get to. So eternal fire, the everlasting fire was prepared for who? The devil and his angels. God did not create the everlasting fire for man. Can somebody say amen? amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Can somebody say amen? amen? Praise God. Let me run a little bit more. <laughs> Give you a few more minutes here. How important it is for us to live our lives avoiding everlasting fire. It's only foolish if we don't live our lives that way. And I find myself saying these days that even if there was no hell, even if there's no accountability for man's the way man lived his life, I think it still would make more sense preparing just in case it's true. So that means if I end up tomorrow and I really meet God, at least I'm prepared. If I didn't meet God, at least I'm prepared. Because what if I meet him and I wasn't prepared? Something just makes sense. Right. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit more. Turn to Matthew 24. <coughs> We're living in the end time. And we've got to prepare ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Hello? Some of us need to start listening to the news a little more often, too. Because you're going to hear some things happening, amen, that you need to hear. How many of you have heard of the news that scientists just uh, um, reported that they discovered that the earth is moving much slower than it used to move? So, according to their theory or their discovery, the earth is slowing down. Now, I don't know how many of us here are drivers. I do have been doing a little bit of it. But one thing I know, when I start slowing down, it, it's usually an indication that I'm about to. 
You see, God give you wisdom, you know. It's you have to use it and know how to use it. Because the message is in the wisdom. The hurt, they say, slowing down. Now I heard this little scientist came on and he's going to give us some explanation of why it is slowing down. And I know where he would start. Oh, it's the environment. Or we tell them that, you know, you got to be more environmentally friendly. Which is one of the biggest lies, hello? And I hope none of you buy this environment garbage. Hello? No man made this hurt and no man can destroy it. Come on. None. No man. No country, no nation, no holly, no war, nothing. No environment, no pollution. You cannot destroy the earth. This God made it and only God shall destroy it. Amen. He will destroy it. Amen. But no man can touch it. Before man destroyed this earth, man dead. Come on. Oh, let me preach like I'm in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Hello, before man destroyed this earth, the whole of them dead. You can't destroy what God built. Amen. 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 Going around spreading false rumor and propaganda about pollution and taking millions of dollars from people and billions trying to protect the earth. And I'm secure the herd instead of taking it and put it in the belly of hungry children. Hello? Murderers and liars. So they went on to explain that the environment and when the masses built up, it shipped this and they talk some rubbish, you see? But listen, it's good for you to hear it. Because you will interpret it, not how they interpret it, but how the Bible said you should interpret it. Hello? Yes. Oh, back to the news. You're not listening to the news. Didn't you hear the news tell you that the next big wave that will hit the earth, the, the people of the earth, is space travel? Didn't you hear that? Oh, you didn't hear it. You're not listening. There are several companies now who are literally racing to have spacecraft taking you on a vacation or on a travel outside of Earth and you just go fly in space and come back. Do you think this is... <laughs> Do you think the world is not collapsing? you think man is not preparing all the equipment he needs to destroy himself? Space. The Bible says, for heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. He passed the space between heaven and earth. He placed man one place and one place only, and that is earth. So all them little notes you get it in the getting in the mailbox talking about secure your piece of land on Mars. You can't the money come give me. I have better use for it. Because you will never live on Mars. No president, none of them. Let them go up there. They will die before they say, before they say amen. amen. Take it from me, you scientists, and you government liars. Take it from me. Man was made to live on the earth. Telling us you find water, you find a sea of water on the moon. Go and go live there, no? <laughs> you know what God showed me about 25 years ago, right in Canada. I was riding on the subway one day and the Lord says, just start talking to me, say, you know why they're doing all these things? They said to themselves, this generation is smarter than the generation of, uh, of Noah. That's what God said they're saying in their mind. They said Noah wasn't sophisticated and intelligent enough uh, to escape the flood, but they are. That's what they're saying in their mind. They're not saying it in so much words for you to understand. So they are literally looking for a place outside of earth because they're trying to find a place of escape. But if you spread your bed in hell, behold, God shall be here. If you take the wings of the bird and fly to the other part of the space, behold, God shall be there. Amen. 
You know, listening to news, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of warning you. I'm going to close soon. I'm just kind of trying to prepare you so you don't get caught up or distracted Amen. with all that's happening around you. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Mm. Are you not listening to the news? Huh? You didn't hear that that which a lot of people are behind bars for today in North America and other parts of the world. You did not hear that our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that he's going to legalize ganja. You, you're not listening to the news. So that which was illegal shall now become illegal. That which was a dangerous drug to mad people and mad young people. Now you can walk into this convenience store and buy a half split of marijuana. So you're not listening to the news. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Read with me, please. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See that all these things, very I say unto you, they shall not be left here. One stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. He was prophesying about the temple in Jerusalem, which was destroyed AD 70. The temple that they believed that couldn't destroy, was destroyed. Amen. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciple came unto him privately saying, Tell us, Tell us Lord, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming? The sign of what? The sign of what? Is coming. coming. Ladies and gentlemen, he's coming back. Yes. Hello, young men, young children, old people, he's coming back. Whether you like it or not, yes. whether we agree with it or not, he's coming back. What shall be the sign? But there shall be some signs. Yes. Hello? So the disciples understand that before he comes back, there's going to be some sign. So they want to know the sign. So that when you see a sign, if you're driving down the road, amen, and there's a traffic light down there, they usually have another a traffic sign that is telling you that ahead there's a traffic light. Is that amen? So Jesus said, there will be some sign ahead of my coming and also the end of the world. The end of what? The so the world will come to an end. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this world will come to an end. And God don't need anybody approval or their belief or disbelief or their acceptance or their rejection. It does not matter what man said. Man did not build this. He didn't create it. He has no control over it. And what God said is final. Amen. I wish somebody would say amen. amen. Jesus answered them and said unto them, Take heed that what? Read that again. Take heed. Take heed. Take heed. I don't have much time to talk about this, but another time I'm going to go to it because one of my strengths is the study of apologetics. Apologetics means to defend the doctrine of the Bible. I am strong in defending God's words. I know what God's word says. I study what God's word says. I research what God's word says. And I even look for other words that other men and denominations and, and people may say, comparing it or trying to match it up to what God's word says. And just like we sang the song a while ago, there is no other God like Jehovah. I don't care what it is. As a matter of fact, you've got to understand. Some of us don't understand what we are involved in or what we are getting ourselves involved in. We just take everything at surface and we don't understand what's beneath it. Hello, somebody. You need to study. You need to research. The Bible says study to show yourself approved to God. So that you a word one needed not to be ashamed of right and dividing the word of truth. Hello. If you don't know the word, then a man can deceive you. 
Do you understand that God did not denomination? So where denominations come from? Seven day Adventists, Catholic, Muslim, Christians, um, uh, Buddhists, uh, uh, Jesus only, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, uh, uh, emerging baptism, stand up, sprinkle baptism, and, and all kind of mad denomination. Where they came from? Did God make them? No! Did God make them? No. You know what? You know how God, you know the church started out with God? A family. Where the husband was the priest. Come on. In the home. Yes. Hello, somebody. And that's why we must wait and marry good man. Go ahead. And all you little young lady of skin and fire, sit down and relax yourself. Get yourself sanctified in the Holy Ghost. And let God give you a man of God in your house to take care of you, you and your children. So when the devil comes to rip you apart, you have a praying husband. You have an anointed man of God in your house. A husband who said, honey, you sit there and let me deal with this dragon. That's how God started the church. His church. Until the people.